Welcome Year 9. I've put together a tutorial of how you may proceed with the next part of your painting assessment task. At this stage it's still due in Term 3. Your painting needs to have objects and shapes from your sculpture in your composition, references the early 20th century art movements of Cubism, Orphism and or Futurism in your composition. You don't have to have all three, you can choose just one or you can combine. Think fragmentation, which is breaking up of the background space. Use complementary colours, colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel, and demonstrate an ability to create the illusion of three dimensions using tone in your painting. I've included a couple of futurist paintings just to give you an idea of how you could actually break up the background. You'll notice here how they've used tone, and they've used repetitive shapes and lines in order to make it far more interesting and dynamic in the background. So touching base, let's get back to what I started off with, my unpainted canvas, which you would have seen in the previous um, video I made, and then my um, experimentations and the final product of what I ended up painting. Um, what I want you to notice is throughout the process here of how I've actually gone about painting. Um, You'll notice that I've drawn up the canvas with lead pencil and then at the moment I'm blocking in the background with the first layer of paint. Trying to keep the edges nice and sharp and using the paintbrush itself to help actually do that. And the further I go up you'll notice that I start to add lighter um, elements to my paint to make it going from a, a light orange to a, almost into a yellow. Make sure you paint the sides of your canvas, not just the front. And adding yellow and a little bit of white to the paint to, um, to tone it. Now this is not the way that the background is going to end up looking at the very end, but you'll notice very quickly as we go on further with this video, you need a fair bit of paint on the canvas to stop it from being streaky. Now painting is a slow process. The video makes it look painfully quick but the reality is it will take you some time to do this so don't think you can get it done overnight. And as you watch me paint you'll see that I keep turning the canvas to make it that much easier for me to actually cut into those areas that I need to paint into and I come back and I keep touching up bits and pieces as I go. I've mixed up a darker orange because I want the illusion that we have a light source coming from um, what will end up being the top left hand side of the painting uh, and then the further we get away from that light source the darker it's going to become. So you'll see the tonal elements happening as I add paint to the other side of the canvas and to lighten it and tone it I'm using yellow rather than white. Now as um, this actually finishes off and you see the final um, first layer you can still see through that first layer of paint. You can still see through um, and see the, the grid lines from my drawing so it's really really clear that I have to go back and do at least another couple of layers in order to actually make that disappear. I'm now moving on to um, blocking in the blue, um, remembering that I'm going to be using uh, the complementary colours of orange and blue. And to make this really easy for me to begin with, and excuse the fact that the camera thinks it's actually focusing on my hair, is I'm painting in white first and then I'm bringing the blue into the white. Um, and the white works really well as an opaque layer which helps to actually mask out the lead pencil very quickly for me. But this little shape here is a little bit darker because remember I was saying that I want it to get darker as I move away from the light source which is going to be finally up in the top left hand side of the painting. So essentially what we get to watch me do here is just block in these areas with the first layer of paint and it's really clear here you can still see the numbers through the paint so there's no way that I can actually leave this with just one layer of paint. 
um, I'm using the brush to help me get nice straight edges. I can lie it flat or I can cut into um, the line from behind to get a nice straight line. So make sure you get the tool that you're using, which is your paintbrush, to do the hard work. Now I don't want every single um, area on my painting to be treated exactly the same way. And so this is another way that you can actually show some tone as well. And that is to paint your, um, your shapes in flat colours and then progressively um, get darker or lighter depending on which direction you want to go in terms of gradation. Gradation meaning going from light to dark or dark up to light. Um, and then I'm just going to t keep adding slightly more um, darker tones of blue and the way that I'm doing that is I'm not using any white in this blue and I've actually got two blues so I'm able to mix the two blues together one's much darker than the other to make my blues slowly get darker you'll also notice that I've added a little bit of black at a time to make it get darker as well Now I've cut to show you another part of me actually painting um, quite a detailed area of this painting and I'm going around the very edge of the shape which is part of one of the cameras that were in my sculpture and I'm laying down a base colour of I suppose mid-range blue. Now I'm using the point of the brush to help me get into those little fine areas and essentially I'm colouring in using the paintbrush um, the uh, the border that I've actually placed in there. Now while the paint's still wet, because this is the best way to blend, is I'm adding a little bit of white to my paintbrush and toning the very edge down, leaving a bit of an edge there to create some illusion of three dimensions and putting a highlight along, along the edge. Now I'm going to have to come back and do this several times but this is just sort of marking it out. It's the first time it's had paint on it, so it's not going to be as clean and crisp as I would like it. And now I'm just using um, the darker blue just to create that edge so that we get that sense of shadow happening in the image. Now I'm going to be painting back over this very soon so it doesn't matter that I've gone a little bit thick straight on with white paint and I'm going to come back into that with, um, with some of the light blue and here it comes now. So very carefully bringing it up to the edges and filling in that space. Remembering I'm going to have to come back and do this several times in order to get enough paint coverage. One layer is not enough.
Okay, so over a period of a few days, I've been blocking in areas of colour and coming back and putting layers of paint back over the top, depending on which brush I'm using um, to whatever particular um, technique that I need to actually create. Um, I'm just blocking in areas. You're going to see very, very soon though that there are um, a series of photographs at different points along the way in the creation of this painting where I've um, blocked in areas of black and grey and more orange and more blue for you to actually see the actual culmination of the painting itself. Almost there, we've got the final product almost completed with all the tonal elements. And finally the background has been finished off with this fragmentation of the background in keeping with what I've done with the blues and the blacks and the greys. This is just one example. There are so many different things that you could possibly do with this idea and this is just one as a guide to help you. Thanks for listening.